you know, there's a boom in visitor numbers. It's actually quite expensive coming to London. And I think domestic tourism probably is a bit down. We found out at the Academy, we get lots of friends who come very regularly because they buy what's a subscription. But actually people are quite price sensitive. We've been in, you know, people's pay has not gone up and they're making decisions as to whether or not they come to London five times a year or four times a year. I mean, I thought one thing that strikes me when you're looking at those numbers, they jump around from year to year. Surely it just depends on what kind of exhibitions they are. I mean, for example, we had that Matisse one at the Tate, which drew in record numbers, isn't covered by those figures. So, you know. When you've got a big blockbuster exhibition, you're going to get the crowds in. I blame a, a, a decline in, in numbers on the fact that there's not enough art in schools. I think there should be more art on the school curriculum. Art should be encouraged. You know, you, you don't go to an art gallery uh, to, to learn how to become a scientist or a doctor or a pilot um, or a mathematician. But in order to be creative and end up in one of those professions, art does help you. You know, it's like carbohydrate for the eyes or vitamins for the soul. You know, it's necessary as, as part of our, our, our daily life. And more people don't realize the merits of going to an art gallery, which is a shame. And it does come down to education. I mean, your gallery. The Royal Academy it puts on big shows and it charges for them. We do. The we point do. about the Tate and the National Galleries is that they're free, effectively, to go into. And, and we are told by the politicians one of the reasons why they're free is because they want to encourage local people and everyone to feel that they have access to the National Art. I, I think, unfortunately, somebody at the National Gallery said it's because we're an increasingly events-based culture. And Actually, I was thinking about it as I was coming here. If I go to New York, I will go to museums, and I'll go to their permanent collections, I'll go to the Frick. But in London, I myself, at the weekend, will go to exhibitions more often than I will go to permanent collections. And I think there is a shift in balance towards, if one's honest, exhibitions which are packaged, where you see something which has a narrative, and people know why they're going. Even though they pay, they don't necessarily go to permanent collections in the way they used to. Well, I think thought, I say, what's your reaction to that? Because it does seem that, you know, when you look at these museums, the ones that are covering these figures, they're all the ones that don't charge. So is there any point for that? I, I think we need to alert people of the wonderful collections we do have on our doorstep that in essence do belong to us. Maybe um, more of the marketing money has to be spent less on the big blockbuster and more of what's available every day of the week. I, I think that is correct, because in these institutions, and I, I run one of them, you can justify spending money on a temporary exhibition because you recoup it in the yeah. money you get at the Cape. Whereas in a national collection, and I worked in national collections, you don't advertise the fact you've got a Piero on the doorstep. People will go to Italy in order to go on the Piero trail, but they forget that they can go on the Piero trail in the National Gallery. And I think we don't do nearly enough to communicate that. And yet the counter to this is the British Museum, which seems to have no problems with uh, visitors from either, either category. Well, maybe that's more to do with, again, the school curriculum, maybe being more child-friendly because it's to do with the school curriculum. But, you know, every time you go into an art gallery, it's like walking onto a plot of soil and you're nourished. <laughs> you know, you grow. I mean, it's just, just the most wonderful, magical experience. And that's what we need to get across. And, and it's there every day of the week, not just in a blockbuster. I mean, does that mean that it's up to galleries to put on more activities that engage, in particular, younger visitors? I think all of, all of us are doing that a lot. I, I think this issue of encouraging people to be aware of what is on their doorstep. I think that thing that people, you know, when they travel, they get the guide and they think, what, what can I go to in Vienna? Or if I go to Madrid, I'll go to the Prado. And people forget that the Vienna has an unbelievable wealth of things in its collection, I mean, I mean, or the it, Wallace collection, it, or the Sohn Museum. I mean, could it just be that, I don't know, Spanish or Italians or French people are just more interested in painted art than we are in this country? No, I, th I think a, a lot of it also has to do with the fact that we've, we want to be interactive with um, what's around us, you, you know, know Google, games, well that's it, you know, so, <laughs> so perhaps, you know, we, we need, um, you know, I, I hear people saying, oh, I won't go and see it because I can Google that work of art, but you don't get the same experience, you know, you have a certain dialogue and intimacy with the work of art, it's like falling in love all over again, you know. It's, it's
<laughs> but remember, Will Complex has managed to put a negative spin on what is essentially a very positive story. Enormous p numbers of people are going to the Tate and the National Gallery. It's just that there's more, more tourists are going and somewhat fewer I mean, I have to visitors. say what puts me off going to places like the Tate Modern is, is the, num the crowds, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, and, and Tate Modern, you know, people go as tourists. It was, it was a new thing in 2000, mm -hmm. and the truth is that the way people work is they've been to Tate Modern several times and they don't necessarily go again, unfortunately. I mean, then, those are the two biggest, aren't they? And if you look yeah. at the rest of the numbers, the others have actually seen attendance figures going up. So yeah, or, or I mean, yeah, look, not surprisingly, yeah. the National Portrait Gallery. When I was there, yeah. we did the Mario Testino exhibition and the numbers went up to 1.5 million. And I thought poor Sandy Nan would never be able, <laughs> in, it would be unimaginable to, ever to be able to match that. It would only go down. I was completely wrong. It's gone up and up and up. And it's now 2 million a year. Frankly, when I was there, was, I couldn't imagine 2 million. Yet people. outside of London, we're also seeing galleries and museums failing. Uh, well, the Whitworth thing. in Manchester's just reopened, yeah. you know, to, to wonderful rave reviews, but we, we've come to sort of expect that we need to be entertained. We're a bit lazy going to a gallery. We, we go to a gallery and, and uh, expect to find a fun fair there. Sometimes it is, um, but, you know, we need to put in some effort, but there are great rewards. Okay. <laughs>